Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today, we're gonna make a giant bike rack. Four kids means lots of bikes, scooters, and skateboards, and we need a place to put them. I used some pressure treated lumber and cut down a couple of sections just with my circular saw and a speed square. I use these for the ends. The long pieces are just 12 inch boards that I bought from the store. I'm putting this together with a framing nailer, but you could easily use a hammer and nails or screws if you'd like. I cut down one of the 12 foot boards to fit inside of the frame. Then I measured up 18 inches from the bottom and made a mark on both ends. This piece of wood got slid down to match the mark and then got nailed in place. The middle of the frame needed some more support, so I cut down a few more pieces to fit on the inside of the frame. I measured in the same distance from both ends of the boards and made marks on all three pieces. From here I set in the uprights and nailed them in from the top and from the bottom. I set the top pieces in place and nailed them from the top side, but I couldn't nail them from the bottom. Instead I just stood the whole frame up and toe nailed them on the bottom. And that's just a matter of shooting in a nail at an angle. Next I cut two feet to hold up the frame. I used a scrap to draw a line and then drew a 45 degree angle up from that point. Using the speed square again, I was able to cut off that miter on each end of each foot. From here I made a mark where I wanted the feet to sit on the frame and then just nailed them in place. I added one more 12 foot board between the feet and then just nailed it all together. I cut opposing 45 degree angles on the ends of a 2x2 two two piece and set it in place. But after testing with one of the smaller bikes, I realized it was just too tall. Instead, I flipped the whole thing over, so I had to take the feet off, take all the nails out, flip it back over, and put it back together. I just needed to adjust the placement of the feet to match the height of the new bottom section. Once everything was reassembled, I trimmed down the diagonal piece to fit the new setup. Once I had one working, I used it as a template to cut a whole bunch more of them. Just cut one angle, flip the piece over, slide it down, and cut the opposite angle. I screwed these in place with some decking screws and used a scrap piece of 2x4 as a separator. This way I didn't have to measure the distance between each one, I could just set the block in place, screw in the next piece, and keep moving along. And I had to do a whole bunch of these for both ends. To cover the front, I used these slats from this gigantic pallet that a friend of mine had given me, and I cut them all down to the same length, which was 12 feet, to match the boards that I had used in the frame. The speed square is really handy on this project because it makes it easy to cut straight lines with the circular saw on just about any surface. And you can also use it as a spacer to lift things off the ground just a little bit. I put it underneath the bottom board and put in one screw on each one of the joints. After I had it in place, I added the second screw to each one of the joints and then just did the same thing all the way up. On the back side, I made a mark and drilled a hole every 12 inches. I used some plant hanger hooks to go up into these holes and face them forward. These are going to be for helmets. I did the same thing on both sides and then I used my super high tech dolly to move this heavy thing into place. I'll tell you what, that skateboard has been the best dolly I've ever purchased. Finally, it was time to load it up and it was barely enough room for everything. Everything's organized on the back and hidden from the front. And it tells me where I need to stop when I pull in. Obviously most people are probably not gonna have quite as many bikes and tricycles and scooters and skateboards and all that stuff as we do. So you could make this a lot shorter if you needed to. That would be as simple as just changing the length of it. I chose to do 12 foot boards just because I wouldn't have to cut them down. And I actually could have gone a little bit longer on this one, but you could just get eight foot boards instead and still have plenty of room. I actually did have to go back and spread out the pieces to make the slots because I found that the bike that I measured, the fork was actually smaller than a lot of the other bikes. And so some of the larger bikes didn't fit in there and I had to go back to spread them out to six inches. So you're gonna need to measure your bikes or scooters or whatever you're gonna put in this thing to make sure that your gap is as big as you need it to be. So the center section I left open so that we could put big wheels and tricycles and things like that in the bottom and then skateboards up top. Our kids still have these small boards, not a full size board. So I didn't make any sort of a hanger. These are just sitting up there. If you had full size boards that you wanted to put in there, you could make just a piece of wood with some slots cut in it. The boards could fit in like this and they could stack on top of each other. For the front side of this, I chose to use some long pieces from pallets that I had mainly because they were in my way and I wanted to get rid of them. But you could easily cover that in anything that you wanted to. You could make it look like a fence. You could even paint them with with chalkboard paint so the kids had a big area to draw on. But in our case, having the raw wood creates a wall on the other side, which is pretty good for hiding all of this stuff, and that's really my main goal here. 
I hope you liked this project, and if you did, I would love to hear about it. You can let me know in the comments below or at my website, I like to make stuff.com. In fact, while you're at the website, if you want to buy some plans for this thing, I'm going to have them for sale there. I'll put a link down below. If you want to see what I'm up to on a regular basis, you can follow me on Twitter, or Instagram, or Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.